Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a very long time, but I got some updates for y'all. Okay, okay. So um, I'm in Kuwait and I finally somewhat got settled. I haven't really done any much with my space just because, well, I work too damn much. And y'all might be asking, Leah, why are you in Kuwait? Well, it's simple. Y'all voted for the wrong motherfucker and prices are too expensive. So I decided to take my talents overseas where I can keep my moolah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You just gotta do it. You gotta do it. But anyways, I have been keeping up to date <laughs> with what's going on in America, especially with the, um, the elections um, debates. And unfortunately, I was, <laughs> I was like getting ready to go to work and I totally forgot that uh, debates are happening. When the debates were going on, I was getting ready to go to work. But I am here to do some reviews. And I've been saying this for a while, okay? Vivek Ramaswamy? <laughs> but that man came out of nowhere. And I said, I said, that man, if Ronald, if, if um, Ron DeSantis don't watch himself, he's gonna get overtaken by this, this very outspoken gentleman, okay? So without further ado, let's get into some of his highlights and then talk about some other dumbasses that were on this panel that honestly should have never been there in the first place. Like, who the hell wants to elect you? But anyways, let's get to it. You know what? We're, we're, we're going to bring in... I just want to finish responding to Mike. To I just want to respond to Mike for one second because he invoked me back. Listen, now that everybody's gotten their memorized, pre-prepared slogans out of the way, we can actually have a real discussion now. The, the, the reality and the fact of the matter is... Was that one of yours? Uh, it, not not oh, really, man. Mike, actually. Yeah. We're just going to have some fun tonight. That's and the reality fun. is, you have a bunch of people, professional politicians, super PAC puppets, following slogans handed over to them by their 400-page super PACs last week. The real choice we face in this primary is this. Do you want a super PAC puppet, or do you want a patriot who speaks the truth? Do you want incremental reform, which is what you're hearing about, Mike's or do you me. want revolution? Okay. And I stand on the side of the American the revolution. I've got to address We're going to take medalism. control back. So I'm not going to lie. When it came to the fact, he was most definitely coming with the punches. You know, he was like swinging, boy, like, what's up, what's up? So the one thing that um, I believe which made him stand out more than Ron DeSantis is this, and I've been saying this from the beginning, he's, he's not scared to say what everyone is thinking. And he doesn't care which way the wind blows. He doesn't. He says this on his mind, and he will stand behind it. He's not gonna check around to see if other people are, you know, oh, oh yes, that, that's that's how the temperature is in the room, so I'm gonna raise my hand. And that has been like Ron DeSantis' biggest fucking problem during this whole entire, uh, like during his whole entire campaign. He is so timid, he only says things due to how the, the climate, the temperature of the room is, or just the temperature of just how America is. Instead of running the country or running his state, like a governor should. If you're the governor, you don't need anybody's permission to do what is necessary for your, I guess your public, whatever your constituents are telling you to do. You don't need no permission from any other state. Why do you need some consensus? Yeah, oh my God, since everyone's seeing this, then um, maybe I should do it too. That right there tells me you are just, you don't have confidence to stand behind what you truly what's truly your vision for the country. I will not be behind a president like that. And for someone who's in the military, for real, you know, both of us, why would you ever stand behind a leader who does not have a vision and stay and is confident with it and drives, you know, to complete it? No, this man will fucking get everybody killed. No, fuck that shit, and he knows it. So he sits here and plays a good game about you know, it. It's all about the mission. But then you 10 minutes shit? You look around for other people's approval and then make your decision. No, 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 no. You take other people's opinions and their analysis, take them back inside of your house, inside of your room, inside of your space. You think about all the information that's given to you, and then you make a fucking plan and you stick to it. 
Vivek Ramaswamy has that shit wrapped up in a bag. Not DeSantis. He is not presidential material. Not yet. He is not. But let's go back. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Look at that shit. He put his hand right, motherfucker. He didn't wait. He did not wait. That he did not wait. You saw that shit? Look at him. Look at him. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. Just see Vivek isn't scared, okay? Y'all are like little bitches on the stage waiting for everybody else. No, not Vivek. And another good, um, there was another, um, I guess, clip of him where he didn't hesitate to give his answer. And I 100% agree with his analysis on the whole um, Ukraine Russia dispute. I don't care if it's if a Nikki Halley don't like it, okay? Uh, I know that is something that Ron DeSantis says, and it is most quite frankly a dispute. Um, Vivek did not waver. He has been saying this from for a very long time when it comes to that fuckery over there, and of course, you know, DeSantis don't want to be seen as like. Like, technically, I don't want to fund the war, but I kind of have to because if not, then I probably won't get elected, you know, and my fundraiser and all these people who fund me might get mad at me. <sighs> Sorry about that. My alarm went off. But anyways, back to this clip. So let's go ahead and watch it. The administration is now asking Congress for $24 billion more. Regardless of that, the specific specifics of that plan, is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, I would have Europe step up and do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy, you're, but you're saying you would not too, Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe to pull their weight. Uh, but right would, now they're not doing you that, would not and I think we need to like do, no to and I think our support should be contingent on them doing it. And I would have support in China uh, to be able to take uh, to be able to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramos, if y'all don't get what Mr. Vivek is doing, let me tell you what he's doing. He's doing that classic. Uh, I'm gonna see where the wind blow. Which way is a bluff wind? Uh, which way is a bluff wind? And that's the thing, okay? Ron DeSantis, this is easy, like up, bruh. You should stand out. Your constituents, your, you know, America first constituents, they don't want this fucking war. They don't understand this fucking war. Why are we spending so much of our goddamn money? I said got, okay, y'all. Why are we spending so much of our goddamn money over to freaking Ukraine? And because they have their borders invaded? What about our border? What about our cities? This should have been an easy layup for you to say, hell no. Or just no, you want to be all politically correct at all, to this whole question about Ukraine and Russia. This is not our business. Are we sitting some, you know, Nikki Haley wanted to say something like, I believe faster than military budget. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. That's money that you're taking away from us to give to these people who, A, that country is corrupt as hell, okay? B, this is technically a, dis a border dispute, a land dispute. A territorial dispute. Okay, you have individuals in the Donbass region who actually want to be freaking Russian. They don't want to be part of Ukraine. And then what happens? Our president, this freaking senile in office, says that, oh, Russia invading all these small invasions. You might as well just have given them a red light. You might as well just have told the American people. You want to start a war because that's exactly what you did. You gave Russia permission to do this shit, and now you want to take our tax dollars. Y'all ask this government is asking more of our tax dollars to be devoted to these people, these corrupt motherfuckers. Ron, who, who are you trying to? I don't know. Represent your donors or the American First people? Call your freaking constituents. 
Well, you guys, that's it for right now. I'm about to do another video, a very short one between Vivek and Krispy Kreme, Chris Christie. Um, and he says the quiet power of the quiet part out aloud. And that's Chris Christie who says the quiet part out aloud. I don't think anyone actually caught it. And if you did good, if you didn't, I'll explain it to you in the next video and tell you how exactly you shouldn't vote for these fat ass neocon traitors. <laughs>